Welcome to the third episode of Making Versus within KDE and GNOME applications. Again, the idea is not to have like a fight. GNOME are not enemies and for GNOME people, KDE people are not enemies. We're all friendly with each other, hopefully. And this is just a way to see how different applications behave and Personally, I think that I'm not really sold on the text editor from GNOME in particular, so I wanted to highlight why I think that KWrite, because I think it's a fair comparison, KWrite and the GNOME text editor, why I think that um, KWrite is slightly better in what it does. There are some other GNOME applications that wins hand down, but I don't think that text editor is in uh, the case. Let's see why. But first of all, let me thank the sponsor of this episode, which is Nobody. I'm doing this in my free time, and if I'm able to do this in my free time, it's because I don't have any part-time job. And if I don't, it's because nice people, like the names you're seeing on screen, give me money, donate me money, either one time or monthly, and that helps, helps me a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do these kind of things and probably not even like work reliably on KD software. So if you want me to continue, please consider making a donation. You don't have to. It's just a nice thing if you're able to. So we've got text editor on the left and KWrite on the right. As always, if KWrite looks slightly weird, it is because um, I'm running this inside of GNOME. It's not meant to be, but using uh, the flag dash dash style equals breeze, I can actually force the breeze style. So out of the box, one thing that's really asked for is that a simple text editor should be simple. And KWrite is slightly more complex compared to text editor. And in here, we've got just open, new tab, sorry, new document, which I think is a new tab, yes, uh, save and the hamburger menu. In here, we do actually get a full-fledged menu uh, bar and we also get some toolbars with just the basic options, new, open, save, save as, close, undo, redo. In my opinion, and this is very much my personal opinion, I don't think that KWrite is too complex even for a simple use case. I think that if I give KWrite to a person that doesn't need to do some serious coding, they won't be scared of this interface. So even though I do realize that text editor has a simpler uh, interface, I think that maybe doing a slightly more complex interface here is fine as long as it provides some value out of it. And I think this one does. So let me put some uh, text inside of these things and it's fine if it's just not really interesting stuff. In KWrite, we do get the text preview, but it's also there in the new version of the GNOME text editor, so it's not really a big issue. One place where actually text editor from GNOME gay edit uh, wins hands down is touch support and uh, you can just very nicely select text and just by holding you can pop up the context menu with some nice icons it's very intuitive and you can scroll text. KWrite was actually pretty bad at this until recently where uh, support was implemented to scroll through touch which is very nice and you can still select however I think we don't have hold to actually showing a context menu to actually uh, copy the text or paste is harder. Uh, so yeah, text editor wins on this one. However, when it actually comes to editing text, well, first of all, in KWrite, I, I still think this is a nice feature. You can zoom in text. By default, you cannot do that in the GNOME text editor. You have to install a plugin. Also, there are a lot, and I do fully mean a lot of editing um, features that KWrite has. As an example, you can press and hold Control Shift and then the arrows to change the position of a line without having to select the line, select the line above, cut, and then go somewhere else and paste. No, you just have to do like this. There's no such thing here. It just selects text. Also, we've got here multiple cursors, which is a super nice feature, and you just have to hold Alt and then click like this, and you can write in multiple places, and there's no such thing here. And we also get here block and uh, enter mode, so we can do this kind of things. 
And of course, there's no such thing here. And you could say that, you could say fairly that it's not really easy to know that these features exist in the first place. They are in the options, like we've got, we've got block mode somewhere, but funnily enough, I lost it. Oh, here it is, block selection mode. But I do think that even if you don't have the UI for it, but you at least have the option through just source, if the user knows what they're doing, it's a nice to have because it makes editing of even little simple files a bit easier. So let's um, see what do we have in text editor in the hamburger menu. Uh, generally speaking, hamburger menus, I'm kind of undecided on when, whether I like them or not. I probably prefer them over a menu bar, but this is so subjective. So we've got print, full screen, new window, save as, blah, blah, blah. Views with the side panel and the bottom panel, the highlight mode, tools, this uh, spelling mostly and document statistics, keyboard shortcuts, and that's about it. We've got a file browser, which is nice, but you cannot have the documents and file browser at the same time. In Kwrite, you do get uh, this kind of things. You've got in the view part of it. Okay, no, sorry. Uh, I, you don't actually get uh, the sidebars in Kwrite. I was misremembering. You do get them in Kate, which is Kwrite, with more options such as the various sidebars. Kate has lots of them. And to be fair, okay, this is an, an ex unexpected for me. I didn't uh, thought ab think about it. Point to a text editor for actually implementing a sidebar, which is not even too complex. Like it keeps the application simple, but it does help to actually have all the documents you're editing in a sidebar. So totally good uh, job done by text editor. You do get here, however, also bookmarks, which is control B and you do uh, it does color the line and personally i found find this quite useful if you're editing code to actually see what you're editing maybe i'm working on a certain line because it's important then i highlight it and then if i scroll i can still see it very easily you do not get in this version tabs in kwrite and you do get them here However, tabs were re very recently implemented in Kwrite. So as I was saying in a similar way for the right uh, code preview that K um, text editor doesn't have yet, but in, uh, in the ne next version, also as far as tabs go, Kwrite doesn't have them yet, but they are in the next version. So I think it's fair to uh, don't consider that so important. What else do we have in Kwrite? So we do actually get the color scheme, which is the color scheme, not of the text, but of the whole application. And we do also get the color scheme of the text uh, itself, obviously. The color scheme of the application, similarly to the text editor, is set by uh, system settings. So if I open up system settings for KDE, you can customize the colors here. If you open up system settings of GNOME, you can customize the colors here. Let me show you by opening settings and by going dark. You can go dark here as well. However, what you cannot do as far as I know, no, just kidding. You can actually also similarly to Kwrite select the text and change the color just of the part where you're editing the text, which is totally necessary in my opinion, because otherwise, how do you set solarize dark, which is objectively the best color scheme that there is. Then we've got options to select whether we want icon border, but also line numbers, the scroll bar marks, which are here, as you can see, and also in general, the, where is it, the minimap at all, like this, this becomes much simpler. In your similar thing, you get the option to disable line numbers and also display a right margin at a certain column, which by the way is a very useful feature. Of course, also Kate has this. Does K write though? Kate has this, but does K write though? Yes, you can see, sorry, here. Draw vertical line at the word wrap column like this. And we've got in both places a line over 80 characters, which is super useful, as I was saying, because stuff like Python does actually try to enforce through linters um, a character limit. And even though my QML code like goes beyond hundreds and hundreds of characters, Python shouldn't. Python is a good programming language since the, differently from JavaScript and actually is able to be concise. 
Sorry, I was wrong. Uh, you do actually get uh, the overview map here in this version as well. I had uh, missed this, sorry, my bad. Well, wow, look, look at this, this is beautiful. I totally didn't know about this either. You can display a grid part, pat, pattern. I, I'm not sure what it's meant for, but it sure looks pretty. We've got text wrapping similarly to settings of Kwrite. Let's, oops, let's uh, compare the settings. We've got the dynamic uh, word wrap, color themes, as I was saying before. In the editor editing sections, we've got uh, the tab width, which is actually here on the bottom in uh, Kwrite soft tabs. We can automatically close brackets when opening bra bracket is typed. And we do also get in Kwrite the V input mode, which to be honest in Kwrite is something that I could have lived without. I, it's more of a kit feature in my opinion. You do get uh, here, however, and this is a very nice feature, uh, the ability to create a backup, backup copy of files before saving and auto saving files every 30 minutes, which is very nice. However, here you've got a feature which in my opinion, uh, uh, you do also get, sorry, auto save here every 10 minutes, like 30 seconds. Y you do get this, which is I think an incredibly less life saving feature, which removes automatically trailing spaces. And you might say, okay, how is that particularly useful? Well, if you could, seriously, you're going to leave accidentally trailing spaces that happens. And if you push that to a merge request to KDE, as I've experienced many times, you need to go back and do a new commit, actually um, change the previous commit to remove those trailing spaces because you cannot push to master commits with uh, trailing spaces. And that usually takes out time and time that could be better spent. The text editor does have an uh, interesting way to add features to it through plugins, which Kwrite doesn't have, see Kate for that. And one of the plugins that I enabled, the, enabled manually is the ability to actually zoom in, as I was saying before. However, you do get in Kwrite a lot of auto completion, completion, completion options, along with spell check that, as I said, both have. Finally enough, the appearance tab of both is basically a long list of check boxes, but Kwrite being KDE has more. <laughs> As an example, there is this, I, I admit, slightly confusing white space indicator size, uh, which, okay, what is this? However, actually showing white space indicators it, in itself is really useful. It is when you have white spaces, trailing spaces, it shows them. And that's actually pretty useful because again, if you miss them, then you have to redo your uh, merge request. And here you get tools, document statistic with lines, words, and so on. And in here you also get counts with words and show log line count. You do not get characters and bytes. Bytes is indeed interesting, maybe it would make sense. One thing that we do get here in Kwrite is code folding, so if I do like, let's actually save this as some kind of document, I don't know, Python test.py, let's define a function. And just like this, you do get this arrow to collapse the code, which is kind of useful if you've got very long code and you only want to see the important par parts of it. You also get many shortcuts to automatically collapse or show all of them. That's rather useful, I used to use it, use it a lot. All in all, I think that the only kind of confusing part of Kwrite is its edit part of the menu bar because everything else is kind of compact. Edit, it becomes really big. So we've got options like undo, cut, copy, paste, which makes sense. And then we go with block selection mode, the input modes, the overwrite mode, the read only mode, the selection of uppercase, lowercase, and capitalize, um, the ability to uppercase, uh, lowercase, and capitalize uh, parts the ability to toggle comments, join lines, apply word wrap, and find replace, all in this menu. I think that's slightly confusing. There are almost all very interesting features. Again, I think that overwrite mode and buy mode may be not so useful, but that's on me. But offering all of them in this context menu is, in my opinion, slightly too much. So to conclude the video, okay, I'll admit that at the end of it, 
text editor manages pretty well against KWRI, that's true. At the same time, I do think that stuff like uh, the little thing, like actually moving lines very simply, really win on me because it makes the actual text editing, which is the whole point, easier. Also the ability to have multiple cor cursors, these kind of things. And uh, that's really the reason why I personally prefer to use KWrite often instead of uh, text editor. Also stuff like control tab and not switching to the next tab. I don't know why that is, why that is but uh, it's slightly annoying not to be able to switch between documents like this. Maybe there are some other shortcuts, but I mean, all programs use control tabbing. So what do you think? Who wins here? I mean, I said my opinion, it was pretty clear and biased as always. And now it's up to you in the comments to say, no, you're wrong, you forgot about that feature or that feature. That always happens and it's because it tr it's true. I mean, I do forget about some stuff. So if you really like one over another, please make a comment saying why and uh, why what I missed in this video.